Welcome to the Catholic Midlife Podcast, where we address the challenges and the opportunities of midlife from a uniquely Catholic perspective. This is the time, my friends, for a deeper renewal of your Christian vocation. Come and enter into the freedom of Christ that allows you to be the person you were created to be, because there's an amazing, awesome, exciting next season of life waiting for you. Hello, and welcome to the Catholic Midlife Podcast. You're here with Curtis and Karen Herbert, your hosts of the podcast. Hi, everybody. Hi, Karen. How are you doing today? Doing very well, thank you. That's great. We heard from a listener. Karen, you remember getting stopped at church? Yeah. <laughs> the man that stopped us said, hey, I just want to let you know, I listened to that podcast. I bet you were wondering, is there anybody on the other end of this microphone? Yes, said, I do wonder that, actually. Yes, sometimes we wonder that. Thank you so much for the encouragement. Yes. And we want to share encouragement with you, our listeners, and this is a great week to polish your positive language praxis. Oh. You can work on being positive. You'll probably be pleased. Holy cow, you're really going for the alliteration. Way yes, to go. exactly. <laughs> I was inspired by Paul Allen, oh. who's our local football announcer. He uses he, big he words like praxis. Oh. <laughs> Taking your tips from the pros. I yes, see. exactly. And we're going to talk about language. And one reason is that our unconscious minds, oh, they listen to what we have to say and they want to make it happen. They respond to the direction we give them. They're like big friendly elephants. They have yeah. big ears. Oh, what are we saying? Oh, maybe I should do that if I want to. Now, Karen, there's endless stories of people being primed with words before undertaking a task. And I, I like these studies. They really illustrate how your unconscious mind is listening. And these psychology studies, they're always so hilarious because they're sneaky. What I like about them is they, they always tell you they're testing for one thing, but they're never testing for that. It's always misdirection. Exactly. So here's, uh, here's one if you're ready. The scientists... They exposed people to hostile words and then measured their subsequent aggressiveness. So the game was they would get these scrambled words and they had to rearrange them into sentences. So for instance, door the fix had to be unscrambled to be fix the door or hit he them became he hit them. And then somehow in some curious segue, all the subjects that participated in that innocuous task were asked to deliver 20 electric shocks to a fellow subject. <laughs> Say, before you go, would you like to administer 20 electric shocks to one of your fellow subjects? I'm not sure this would be legal nowadays. <laughs> Prior exposure to the violence-linked words led to a, how much of a jump in intensity? 48%, almost half extra. You mean they would deliver higher electric shocks? Yeah, so the people that were primed with words like hit and punch and aggressive words yeah. unconsciously were going to dish out more intense shocks to their buddies. Interesting, interesting. And that's that's just classic, and that's from Robert Cialdini's Persuasion book, and I'll cite that book in our show notes. Okay, give me another one. Give me another study. Oh, another one. Okay, so if you're done with the violence, we can go on to achievement. Oh. Everybody likes achievement. Do you like achievement? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like achievement? Exposing individuals to words that connote achievement like win, attain, succeed, master, stuff like that. It increases their performance on an assigned task. So again, this is the busy social scientist. And it more than doubles their willingness to keep working at it, at least in this situation that was tested. So the situation was a call center. Do, do, do. Yeah. So you're, you're the university alumnus, and you find yourself in this big group, and they serve you this piece of paper with all the talking points for their fundraising drive. And you're the lucky volunteer that gets to call other people and say, hey, 
Sorry to interrupt your dinner, but have you thought about giving to the university? Oh, okay. I thought when you said call center, I was like one of those places where people call to complain and yell at you about the bad service. Right. No, this is, this is outgoing calls. Okay. So people in this setting raising money for a university, they had their, whatever, their prattle sheet or whatever you call the thing with all the talking points. Yeah. And one set of people got the sheet and it had the instructions. The other set got the sheet with this inspiring image. And I saw the image. It's this woman crossing the finish line in a race, breaking the ribbon. She's got her hands up and it says success under it. And it's kind of a cool image. Now, by the end of the three hour shifts, the sample of callers that had been presented with this image that were looking at this image had, they raised more money. How much more money? 60% more money than their coworkers. So you're telling me that all of those cheesy posters you can hang on your wall that inspire success, like there's actually something to that. Yes, yes. Use the cheesy posters. Wow. I'm going to have to totally redesign my home. We're going to have to redecorate around here. (laughs) But there, I remember we had that plaque up that said, be still and know that I am. Mm, Yes. And there's lots of great messages for us to receive from our environment. Interesting. Makes me think of that sign that Ted Lasso had above his office door. What did that say again? Believe. Believe. Yes. Okay. Not as cheesy as I had first anticipated. Exactly. So you want to use the words of the person that we want to be. Okay. Okay. So if I'm trying to step into, you know, my better self, that I should use the words of that better self with myself. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm totally jiving with you here because I, I do totally agree that what we tell ourselves either like internally or out loud, the things that we're saying to ourselves with our language, they do affect the direction and focus that we're giving to our life. I mean, it matters. They do. And if you listen to yourself during the week yeah, and see how much of your language is positive and how much of it is creating positive emotion and optimism compared to the flip side, yeah. You you might be surprised. And in, in some sense, this is kind of bad news for me because historically, I'm kind of the curmudgeon. <laughs> That's sort of the role that is just tailor-made for me. <laughs> With all my little comments. And it can be entertaining, yeah. but it has its price and it could wear people down. Huh. And uh, I'm not the curmudgeon I used to be. It's true. But it's true. all that grumpy, stoic language is not as helpful yeah. as simply helping your unconscious mind, realize, which is listening, realize, hey, I, I want some things. We can do some things. We have some hope. We could have some achievement. We have a new day right? and new opportunities. Okay. Well, I have a question about this because I do know that the whole positive affirmation movement has been shown really not to work quite as well as people first anticipated. You know, that kind of thing where you're just telling yourself, yes, I am confident. I'm powerful. I'm confident. I'm an ace. I've got this. I'm a wonderful salesman. Yeah. I'm a great person. I have sexy legs. (laughs) Whatever your (laughs) affirmations are, honey, I don't know. Well, it's just like, you know, if, if you don't really believe it, if you're not bought into it, it's not going to do anything. It's just sort of surface level. You can say that all you want, right? But I feel like it's research has shown th- those really don't turn the dial for people. Yeah, absolutely. So false or unsupported affirmations about who you are or what you're doing are less than helpful. They're probably unhelpful. And you're looking at me, so I better clarify a little bit what we're talking about. <laughs> we want to be rational optimists. We, we simply want to f- 
focus on what's possible, emphasize success and achievement language. We don't want to dwell on the pessimistic parts. Of course, Karen, we have to process our negative emotions. Of course, we don't stuff them. We integrate them into our lives. We don't suppress them. We don't belittle them. We don't believe that the emotional life is something to be mocked or put down because we want to have our spiritual, mental, and emotional lives fully integrated. Uh, We do want to work with our emotions and using positive language, creating positive emotion as we live our lives, it's, it's very helpful. Okay, so what you're saying is not so much I'm telling myself something I really don't think is true and hoping I'll believe it. Rather, there's lots of different perspectives and there's lots of different things that are true. And I can choose to focus on any sliver of that that I want to. And I can choose approaches that pull from a positive foundation, and that's going to give me a different perspective. On Absolutely. What I'm doing. And okay. as we've discussed many times, we have a huge negative bias yeah. in pretty much everything. So we have to reach, we have to reach for the positive, the positive mm-hmm. speech, the positive emotion. Are you ready for another study? Yeah, bring it on. Okay, here's a little one. This was for medical students, so new doctors, baby doctors. Okay. They were getting trained in diagnostics and or tested or whatever, like in a seminar sort of thing. And they had these manuscripts, and they're supposed to work through the dialogue and come up with a diagnosis. And so one of the measures was, hey, how long does it take this doctor to get to the right diagnosis, according to the studies that set up? And how much time were they stuck on a wrong diagnosis? Because their human nature can be the first thing that we first answer. We can really hang on to that and not want to let it go. Yeah, I've heard that. And there's a medical term for this where your first intuition, you need to be able to let it go quickly as the new information comes in. Okay. So they measured those two things, the right diagnosis and time being stuck. So students primed with positivity were twice as fast in getting to the right diagnosis and they were stuck less than half the time. How about that? That's pretty impressive. Now, and this may affect how you go to your next doctor appointment because you know, Karen, how they were primed. Well, that was actually my next question. How do you prime yourself or somebody else with positivity? I guess based on the other studies, it's positive words positive posters on the wall? Things like that. But in this case, what they did is they gave them a small gift of candy that really? they could have after they were done. For real? Yes. <laughs> so just having the small gift of candy gave them positivity. It just moved their outlook yeah. to the to the positive. And, and of course, the negative, strong negative emotions... Negative outlooks, pessimism, it closes down, it narrows our field of view mentally, even physically, and and the the positive, more optimistic views create, let, let us be more open to possibilities and opportunities and to make the connections. Wow. This is sounding really interesting to me. I could, I could technically prime myself with positivity to help help me have a better outlook. I mean, that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah. So the uh, bigger question is, well, what if you approached your day being prepared spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically? What if you're trying to be prepared in all these categories? Now, Karen, part of this, what we're talking about is you can help to summon the emotions are going to, going to help you in yeah. a situation. And positive language is kind of a just an easy entry point into that. And I know that when I was getting coaching training, I resisted 
the invitations to shift my emotions, just to be sitting there and shift my emotions from one state to another. And the, of course, I was being asked to have a more positive outlook so I could see more possibilities, so I could perform better, so I could show up as the person I want to be. And I resisted that, but finally I realized, wait a minute, I'm used to shifting my emotions. I'm used to shifting my mindset. Every time I sit down to do a task, I clean my desk mm. and I create the frame of mind that I know is going to be most helpful for that type of work, be it grinding or creativity or what have you. And being willing to move my emotional state is an important part of me being able to show up mentally and emotionally as the person that I want to be, as that person of virtue that's living out all my spiritual aspirations. Right. I, I know what you're saying about the emotion because we're totally able to access emotions that can serve us in a certain situation. So I'm thinking, for example, maybe there's something I need to do and I don't feel totally competent about it. However, I, I do have confidence. Like I can access the emotion of confidence and bring that to the task. And it opens me up to a lot more learning than if I'm telling myself, I can't do this. I, I don't have the skills or this is just going to be a big mess and I'm going to have to clean it up. Absolutely. That's one example of a positive emotion that you can shift into so you can show up at your best. Yeah. And how we show up our language and our emotions and all these, the positive aspects of it, it, it matters. Um, gr good leaders understand this. They understand this very well. You're getting better results from your team, from the people around you in the moment, in the long term. I mean, like workplace morale matters. It totally matters. It matters a lot. And as we sit here, we're thinking, oh, yes, 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 of course, it's so obvious. But think about all the work situations you've been in where the management is just grumpy and they're showing up and they're, it's sort of like, you better get this right or else. Yeah. Or you messed this up. You're a big loser. So now go do well. Boy, I'm a great manager. I've really motivated that employee. <laughs> They're really going to want to fix that problem. So even though we know intuitively that, hey, this positivity, it is powerful stuff, we don't implement it. We maybe don't know how or it's, I don't know, not top of mind. So, so if I'm going to look at the next week and think about how am I going to implement a little more positivity do you have like one suggestion? No, that's that's too big of a challenge for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sort of teasing. Well, here's I want to I want to bring another element into this. So okay. there's the the me, my performance, but it, also the people around us. Yeah. And so here's can I just do one little another little study? This oh, is fun. Okay. okay. Go ahead. This is fun. So here we have uh, I think these were MBA students and they they had this basic business kind of experiment they had teams and there was this set of tasks that they were going to perform all morning and somehow their corporation was making money or not according to these tasks so but the sneaky part of this study was they had the students in these teams but each team had a manager that would drop by and they would give them feedback and the feedback would either be, they were actors. Yeah. Either be cheerful enthusiasm, serene warmth, depressed sluggishness, or hostile irritability. And so you can guess which two feedback styles were far more effective. The positive, the cheerful enthusiasm, the serene warmth. I mean, look, if you're giving feedback, you can give it with some positivity and some encouragement. It, it doesn't cost you more than being really aggressive and, and negative about it. You're still conveying the information. 
And if you can do it in an encouraging way, everybody wins. I really like this, especially because from my self-compassion lens, I'm thinking about all the times I'm giving feedback to myself about what's happening around me and how I'm doing and whether I'm being effective and whether I think I'm messing up. And I can give myself that feedback positively or I could give it to myself negatively. Positivity pays. Mm -hmm. It really does. Of course, of course, there's toxic op optimism and, and all these kinds of excesses that we can fall into. But in general, positivity, some cautious optimism, it's really going to pay off for us. It's going to pay off for the people around us. So what do we do? We seize every opportunity to provide just clean, positive emotion and feedback to the people around us. Now, Karen, we're not responsible for the emotions of the people around us. So we can be encouraging, but if they're not getting it, that's really not our problem. We're not going to let that weigh us down. We don't have to carry the crowd. So really what I'm focused on is how I'm showing up. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to show up and I'm going to try to carry the positivity. I'm going to use positive words, success kinds of words. When I find myself uh, dwelling excessively on the negative, I'm going to look for that different perspective. I'm going to frame my thoughts and ambitions in positive things that I'm trying to do or accomplish as opposed to avoiding or being discouraging. Okay. So I'm hearing a couple things that our listeners could take into the next week. One is pay attention to what you're saying and, and how you're saying it and whether it's focusing on the negative or focusing on the positive. And I also have an idea if, if somebody notices, hey, you know, I'm kind of got this negative perspective slice on this situation. I, I think they could just ask themselves, well, what would a more positive slice of this pie look like if I took a different angle? Not I'm making up something that's not true, but I'm trying to look at it from a more positive perspective. Like, what would that be? That is great, Karen. I like that. It is a week. Take the week to listen to yourself because your unconscious is listening. It's always listening. It's going to help you. It wants to help you focus on the positive things so it can help you positively and work on this being positive. I love You'll it. probably be pleased. <laughs> and here's something else you can do this week. Think of one friend that you know will enjoy this podcast and has not heard of it and tell that friend to come on over to their favorite podcast platform and check out the Catholic Midlife Podcast. Thanks for being here with us. The Catholic Midlife Podcast is for anyone that wants to receive the abundance of life that God has for each one of us. Take a moment right now to tell a friend about us.